Hi everyone, my name is Eric Diekman. I am a business consultant here at ProValTech. Today I'm going to go over the setup tables uh, side of agreements and why it's important to understand and how this works. Please like and subscribe the button at the bottom right hand corner so you never have to miss out on another one of our videos. So let's get into it. So today we're going to be going into the setup tables and taking a look at the agreement type setup. So we've just simply gone in here. We can always do a search if it's not here, AGR, and pull up that agreement type. Now, agreement types can be used for a variety of different things. Uh, the most common being something as a naming convention, managed services, gold, silver, platinum, something like that. But it can also be used in some cases to break down product grouping. So maybe um, software versus hardware versus managed services. Um, and we also may want to potentially have agreement types to separate out billing cycles, annual versus monthly, something like that. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to click in here and we're going to break down the um, different components of the important pieces of an agreement. Now, uh, naming, we can name this, we can rename them, we can kind of uh, use anything that we want, anything that makes sense. There's no uh, best practice in terms of naming. It's going to be what works internally. Your SLA, plain and simple. If you leave this blank, it assumes the system SLA. If you put something in, it will override the system SLA. So in some cases, maybe you have an SLA for um, higher priority VIP clients. This would be where you would want to set that. This then sets it so that it's going to be um, an override for from the system default. Location and department. This is only going to make a difference if you are actually going to be reporting revenue by that location department and if you're going to be using the billing amount on the face of the agreement. We'll talk about that in a moment as well. Um, Usually recommend leaving these boxes checked. We'll talk about that as well. Um, moving down through here, application parameters. The most common that you're going to see are going to be hours-based agreements. Um, we have an option here to either put in a limits or put in um, unlimited. Now, what this is referring to is this is referring to our covered work roles and work types. So this is saying that in an hours-based agreement, if we have a technician who does on-site work, his or her time is 100% covered. Now, we want to mark that time as billable because it's going to be billed to the agreement. That way, it's also billable. So in this case, after hours, if I were a technician and I marked my after hours time as uh, billable, it's going to be billed directly to the client and it's going to bypass the agreement, whereas any of these items would all be covered by the agreement. This is saying this is available for calendar month. Now, in the case of unlimited, not as big of a deal, but let's say we had 10 hours in here, that's available every month that would reset, right? So just some of the basics of this. Now, when we're doing hours-based agreements, we have the ability to carry over unused and we could set the days to expire. So we could say it expires in 30 days, it expires in 60 days. And allowing an overrun is saying that we can pull from the from the next month. So if we have 10 hours this month and 10 hours next, and we've run over this month, we want to be able to pull two hours, we can set a limit here. So we could say you can pull up to 25% of that time. Now, those are just some um, examples of how those hours-based agreements um, can be used. The other options that we have on here are going to be amount-based and incident-based. Amount-based is exactly as it is. Uh, in many cases, an amount-based may be used if they are purchasing a block of time, but that time can change based on whether it's after hours or whether it's during regular hours. The benefit to using the amount-based agreement is that it will decrement in a unit of time of dollars, not time, where the hours based. So in an hours based, an hour is an hour. It doesn't take into effect that after hours may be time and a half. But an amount-based agreement will take that into effect. So if you're saying it's 150 on after hours, it would do that and decrement that amount. So if we had a limit in here, let's say $2,000, $100 an hour would decrement out of that. And if it was after hours, it would be 150 and it would decrement out of that. So just some options on here. Now, um, all of this can be also set over here in terms of what do we want to have covered and what do we want to have not covered, right? So whether it's an amount-based agreement or it's an hours-based agreement, we want to know potentially what is covered by this agreement and what is not. And this may be where maybe on certain things we say, okay, on the basic standard agreement after hours is not covered and neither is on-site, but our remote is covered um, and you know our normal day-to-day -day work is covered. So we have some different options in there. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, our billing defaults, um, plain and simple, 
these are the billing defaults. They're going to go by cycles. Now, changing this amount on here does not change the value of this agreement when we apply it to a customer. It just changes the cycle and the frequency in which we bill them. So again, most commonly, we're going to see uh, monthly, probably going to be based on the contract year versus the actual calendar year. So based on when that contract starts. Now, personally, I normally do not recommend using the billing amount here because I recommend adding an addition when we actually apply it to the customer. Um, and we'll get a little bit more into this as well. Now, billing information. What these check boxes do here, if I were to check these, is this would say that if any of the items that we use, we do on a ticket and any of the work we perform was covered, we want to still push that down to invoicing. So most commonly, especially on a managed service type agreement, we're going to uncheck those because we don't necessarily want to be creating zero dollar invoices. The next section we have on here is simply going to be the record, record defaults, meaning that when we create a ticket, what do we want or do we want to have any overrides in terms of the work roles, the work types, anything like that. Now, just as before in the SLA, if we leave this blank, then it's going to assume the system defaults. Nine times out of 10, my recommendation is to leave these blank and leave these set to no default because we want the system to do the work. We want the system to pick up what it's actually supposed to be doing. And if we start to set some of these defaults on a lower level, then it potentially can mess up our billing or what we actually wanna have covered or specific scenarios for specific clients. Default for new records. What this is simply saying is that this is saying that when I create a ticket for this department, that I always want to have this defaulted on here. Now, I only chose the two first ones here, our location and apartment, which means that any boards underneath this would then be covered. I can also get more granular and I could choose a specific board if I wanted to. But this is gonna say anytime that we create a ticket either via manually or a ticket comes in via the email connector, automatically attach this agreement to that ticket. Now. Up here on the top, we have our work roles and our work types. What these are, are these are simply overrides to the system um, default, right? So we're gonna say for this particular client, when we actually do work with them, if they're gonna be doing professional services, instead of $250 an hour, these guys get a rate of 175. So that's what we're doing. Now we can limit this, and we can also have an effective date and end date. Just some more granularity on that. Now on our work type, we can do the same thing, but we can get a little bit more granular in regards to, we could say, okay, yes, they do have unlimited, but after hours, we're only going to give them a certain amount. So we're going to say after hours is limited to 10 hours a month. So what we're doing simply is we're saying that, yep, this is a um, multiplier. We're going to say that the rate is normal. We're going to say it's, it's a multiplier of one. So Working it all the way back, that's the same setup that we have in the system. So we're not really changing anything, but what we're doing is we're putting a limit on the amount of after hours work that they can do on that agreement. So even though it's an unlimited hours based, they have a limit of 10 on the after hours. Now this overage rate is going to be same thing. What we're gonna say is, um, we're gonna say it's a multiplier and actually do it as a 1.5. So um, we could either set it this way and say that, okay, after their 10 hours, it goes into a normal after hours. Or what we could do is we could say that, yes, it is still a multiplier, but let's say it's 1.25. So they get a 25% discount on the normal rate, right? So we could, or we could do something along those lines. So this is just some options on how to set this up. But these are the high level settings for the agreement types breaking some of those different pieces down. In further videos, we're going to discuss how to apply these and some of the common tips and tricks in terms of applying agreements to customers to make them most effective and most efficient for you and your business.